everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and it is time for block eight of the Missouri Star All-Stars block of the month. This is the block we're talking about today. And right here, it's right here in the quilt, right over my shoulder. So the whole time I'm talking, you can look at that. Now, these are pretty easy to make. I know they look like you've worked kind of hard, but they're pretty easy to make. So let's open our box and see what's inside this week. Oh, there we go. And opening up and we have our pattern and we have some fabric in our box. So let's take a look at this fabric. We have some a strip that's a one and a half and you can see we've done that around here like this and then we have some bigger strips out here and we're gonna look at those later. So we'll set those to the side and then um, we're gonna open our pattern and let's see what it says. We also have some of the uh, five inch squares here and I'm gonna separate those by color and by background. And then when we open our pattern and we see it, the first thing it says to do, it says to cut, take one five inch square to use in the center of your block and cut it to four inches. So that's this block right here. We're gonna cut it to four inches and that means all these other blocks, in order for them to fit together, they're also going to be cut to four inches. So let's start with that first one right here. And we're gonna just take this one. And I love that they actually do these little cutting things first because then when you get your block ready to go, you're like really ready to put it together. So I'm just gonna line this up on my mat here. And I'm gonna take my, oh, I can't cut with my pen, so I better use a rotary cutter. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how we pick up something and it's like, you look at your hand and you're like, mm, no, that's not going to work. All right, so this is again being cut down into four inches. So we're here at four. Now we're just going to set this aside up here and put these two little pieces over here. Then we're going to take four background blocks. So we've got one, two, three, and four. And I'm gonna line these up and I'm gonna cut them all at once. So make sure you have a nice sharp blade in your rotary cutter and you can do that too. And I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, I love this fabric. This one has a pair of scissors like right there. So cute. Oh, this one has a butterfly. I'm gonna keep that one. So you'll notice on some of these fabrics, if you can actually, see the design and somehow in their randomness of cutting these out, it's actually kind of centered on the square. Use that, those are great for the corner blocks and it'll just be perfect. All right, so I'm lining this up and I'm gonna put my ruler and cut one inch off of each side because these are gonna be our four corner blocks. So we go here, put that over there and one more. There we go, all right. So now we'll set these aside for the corners. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to make four uh, hourglass blocks. These are hourglass blocks right here. And you're actually gonna get two of uh, the same color out of each one. So at the end of this, you'll be left over with four blocks to make a whole nother block or whatever you wanna do. Uh, we won't need that in the quilt, but I always love it when you get that little bonus block out of it. All right, so here's our four colors. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take my four background squares and I'm gonna draw the line corner to corner on these. So I'm gonna take my little ruler here and I'm gonna draw the line just like this, corner to corner. And here's another. And watch that, you know, it'll kind of scoot a little bit as you're, as you're drawing the line. Um, so watch that it, it kind of stays like right in that corner to corner. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to put these right sides together. Oh, I did, I should have mentioned, make sure you draw your line on the back side of your fabric. And because um, we're gonna put these right sides together like this. And then we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch on both sides. And so I'm gonna come over here and so a quarter of an inch on both sides of this line. So I'm gonna sew down one side and up the other like this. 
And then I'm just going to set this aside and I'm going to do this to all four of these blocks. So we're just going to line it up on there like this. And come down the other side. Same thing two more times. Let's see if we can chain piece these and make it go a little faster. So I'm going to sew down the side on this one. And then I'm going to add this one in the mix and also down the side on this one as well. Now we're going to flip the whole thing around and sew down the other side. So you can actually do that with all four of yours, but you know, we move along as we feel comfortable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut these in half right on the line. So I'm going to put my ruler right here on this line like this, and then I'm just going to slice it in half and I'm going to set these over on my ironing board. And, um, uh, I'm going to iron them to the dark side, so I should put them like color side up. And then this one, and then one more here. All right, so now let's take a minute and iron these to the dark side. And I'm just going to set my seam like this, and then I'm just going to roll this back. And we're going to set these up here like this and roll them back and set the seam and roll it back. I noticed there have been comments lately, you know, it's always a good idea to set your seam. You know, it's probably not going to matter in the, the whole scheme of your quilt too much, but it does make your thread relax and lay in there really nice. And I get in a hurry sometimes and I forget to do it. And my quilts still come out just fine, but it's always a good idea if we, if we tend to do it the right, not the right, but you know, in a way that is, uh, makes more sense. So we're setting and we're pressing back. All right, so now we're gonna take one of our, we're gonna put our matching blocks together. We're gonna take one of those and we're gonna draw a line corner to corner, right across the color and the white. So I'm gonna draw a line, and now because you have this little seam in the middle, it kind of makes a little bit of a hump here, so you're gonna really wanna press down good and solid on your ruler, and then draw that across there. And we're gonna do this to one of all of our uh, pairs, just to one side. And again, I'm just gonna come here, make sure that that ruler is on there nice and firm. And I'm just using a regular pen so that, um, because I'm going to cut on that line anyway, it won't matter. You can use whatever you like to mark your blocks with. And then we've got, I'm putting, putting a, one in the marked pile and one in the pair pile so I don't accidentally mark two. It won't hurt if you mark two, but it will, um, it just takes a little more time. And, oh, now see, I want to, I want to show this right here. So see, I started over here. And I noticed it wasn't quite going to the center, so I just kind of rotated my ruler back and made it go to the center. That is totally okay, because um, we want a nice straight line to the center. All right, so now when we put these together, we're gonna put them opposite sides. So we're gonna put the white to the green and the green to the white. And we're gonna feel them on this seam to make sure that there's no fabric in between. And to test, you're gonna put your finger right here in the middle and lift this up, and these should be opposite, just like that. And so we're going to lay this down, and um, again, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I'm exactly on the other side of that seam. And then we're going to sew a quarter inch on both sides of this one. So I'll go down, and I'm feeling to make sure that mine is still like right on that seam line. You want that middle section to line up. And then I'll come up the other side. Flip it around and come up the other side. Actually, let me check to make sure. You know what? I'm just a hair off here, so I think I'm going to take this out and, um, and do it again because this little center seam is the part that really matters. So I'm just going to pick out a few of these threads right here. And uh, actually, let me show you what I'm talking about when I say we're a little off. So see right here? 
how it just comes over a little bit, we can get that perfect. We can. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick out a few of these threads. And I'm doing about one out of every 10 stitches or so. My stitch length on this, I always sew at about a two and a half or a three um, because I want it to be large enough to pick, uh, but small enough to hold together. And so when you do one out of 10, you can come on the back here now and, and uh, you know, just pull that thread and it'll come right through. And that's a fast way to uh, get those stitches out. And then I'm going to make this feel it even better. Check it. That's going to be perfect. So let's do that now. All right. Down one side and up the other. All right. Now I should have looked at that halfway point. But I'm pretty sure I did it right. Yes, so that is perfect right there. So now we're going to do that with all of ours. So again, you line them up opposites. And you're going to lay these. You can just feel where that seam is in the middle there. We're going to lay these together. Feel where that seam is. I'm going to make sure this is pretty centered up on here. And then we're going to sew a quarter of an inch on either side. Let me peek to make sure. Yep. And around the other side. Now if you have a quarter inch foot for your sewing machine, that would be really helpful for this because um, we're doing a quarter inch from that line. I just use the edge of my presser foot over here um, and put it on the line. So my squares are actually, um, you can see if you've looked at my foot, it's the standard one that comes with the machine, but it is very, it is narrower. And uh, so um, my quarter of an inch generally comes out a little bit smaller, but we're going to be squaring these up so it doesn't really matter. It's not going to really matter too much. And one more here. And again, start up, line it up in the corners and then feel for this. Oh, well, it feels pretty good. Looks pretty good. Down the other side. Alrighty. Now you definitely want to peek and look at these because we are going to now cut them in half. And see, that's perfect. And it's pretty easy to get it perfect with some practice. And, you know, if this is the first time you're doing um, these little Ohio stars, you may want to put a pin in there, you know, and make sure that it stays like right, uh, right where you want it to. Uh, I have been doing a few of them lately, so... Um, actually quite a few. <laughs> you might watch in an up, for an upcoming tutorial. But uh, anyway, we're, uh, I'm pre I've gotten pretty good at make, making these work and getting them in the exact right place. All right, one more here. And then we're going to press them open. And then we're going to square them. So let's press these open. Oh, set our seam, press them back. Okay, we've got two more to go here. Now, we only need one out of each of these sets because you can see by cutting them in half like this, we get two of these, and so we obviously only need one of each color in our block. So you have now got to start on a whole different something, something. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but you're going to do some fun. And so we're, because we're only going to use four of these. So now we're going to go ahead and square them up. And I, um, if you're going to, depending upon what kind of block you use, I really like the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmer for, for squaring these up because they're going to square at four inches. And with this, what I'm going to do is it has an upper line and a sideways line. And so it just makes them perfect for me to, for me to match up. So I've got my stitch line on their stitch line. And then this middle line also lines directly up, uh, you know, on the top and along the top seam of this, and so it enables you to square them very easily. And we're squaring these to four inches. And so 
See, it's, it's very little waste. And then we're gonna press them, make sure they lay nice and flat. And then we'll make a stack of these. Now I'm gonna square a couple more here with um, the, the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmer. It's, uh, it is important to use tools that make sense to your brain. So um, if, your, uh, if this makes sense to your brain, when I actually found this tool, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. So I use it for half square triangles all the time. And I, I like it because it completely eliminates that um, squaring up uh, stress. You know, I didn't square for a long time because first I didn't know how to do it. And second, I, it was just such a, it just felt like, oh, this will work, you know. And so, um, so I just didn't really square up too much. And now I square up and everything does fit much better. You know, we're all at a different place on our journey and it's important to, you know, just be happy with where you are. But I am really, uh, I really enjoy this ruler. This ruler was like a light bulb moment for me. And so now this last one, because many of you are not gonna have this ruler, I'm gonna show you how to square it up with a straight, um, just a regular square. And so when you're squaring up uh, a ruler with a square, you can use any size square. You don't need a four inch square. You could use a 10 inch square because you're just gonna lay it on here like this. And you're gonna know that this is actually a four and a half inch ruler. And this is the block lock ruler. So I'm actually laying this so that it matches up on the four inch side here. And I'm going to make sure, so I know my middle point is right here on my ruler. So I'm gonna trim this and I'm gonna trim on both sides. So I'm gonna trim this side and this side. And then I'm gonna flip this around and I'm gonna do the same thing. So again, now we're gonna line up exactly in our corner because we have one side that's really straight. Make sure that lines up on there, there we go. Right in that, let me flip this around. There we go, that's what it was. Sometimes you just have to flip it around. And so now you have these perfect little hourglass blocks. All right, so let's lay out our block and see uh, see how it's all gonna go together. We're gonna start with our center block in the middle. And somehow I managed to save that cute little seahorse. We're gonna put four blocks in the corners like this. And then we're gonna set in our um, hourglass blocks. But I'm gonna look actually look at the pattern and it will show you exactly where to put the colors. And so it looks like we have this, uh, this one at the top right here and you're putting them white, white triangles to the middle. And so we've got the green on this side, making sure I'm right, yep. And the pink down here and the yellow, always making sure the white triangle goes to the middle. If you do that, then it forms like, it looks like you've made a square and a square, but you, you know, it's just how we lined up the colors so it came together perfectly. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this row together right here, and I'm gonna lay these right on top of each other and sew a quarter of an inch down the side. And then I will, will flip this around and add the piece on the other side. Make sure this is lined up nice and straight. All right, there's our top row. Now our top row had the hourglass with the two um, background blocks. This one has a colored block with two hourglasses on either side and um, again I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch down the side and make sure that my white is to the center of the block. And then the bottom row, again our corner, our corner pieces go onto the color like this. Wait, let me scooch that up a little bit. Make sure these go right sides together. This, the print on this is so light that there ha have been a few times where I've not been sure if I had the top or the bottom. All right, so now we're gonna sew these three rows together and you notice I haven't ironed these. Um, and what I wanna do now before I sew these together is to press them and I'm gonna press these 
so that the seams go to the outside. They naturally want to lay that way, and so the top and the bottom, I'm going to press so the seams go out, and we'll set that back down here like this. And then this one, my seams are going to go to the inside. These seams want to go to the inside, and I kind of like to let my seams go where they want to go. And so these are going to want to go to the inside. So press from your, the back, press from the front. And now when we put these together, these seams are going in, the other ones are going out, and so they'll nest. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to lay these together. And if you want to, you can clip off these little, uh, little points that stick over if you'd like. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel this again to make sure that I'm right together. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few anchoring stitches and then I'm going to lift this up and make sure that these two seams nest perfectly. So a quarter of an inch. And then I'll stop and make sure my next two seams nest per perfectly. And if it's a little bit off, then I will just really make that fit, make that work. And so because the sewing machine is a great easer. You know, it will ease things right into place. Look how perfect that is. All right, so now this one goes on here. And then, again, I'm just going to take a few anchoring stitches. And you can backstitch if you want to. You'll notice I backstitch. My background is in clothing sewing, and that is a clothing sewing habit that is hard to break. In, in uh, quilting, every seam is enclosed in a different seam, so we don't always backstitch or we don't need to, but uh, that habit is pretty hard to break for me, and so sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. In quilting, you definitely don't need to, but um, some of us do. All right, so here is our little hourglass block, and I'm going to press it, make it nice and flat. All right. So here's our hourglass block. So that was pretty painless, cute and easy. And now we need to add some strips to it. And the first strip we're gonna add is gonna be this color right here, which is called hydrangea. Now, um, whenever you're adding a sashing, there are sashings on these that are different sizes. And whenever you see a different size, like this is um, a one and a half and by 11. It's already cut one and a half, so it's not gonna be you know, it's not going to be a stressful thing for us. I'm going to trim off my little selvage ends right here. And this is going to go um, all the way around to our block. Now you can uh, cut these. They're supposed to be cut in 11 by 13. I'm going to go ahead and just sew mine to it and trim as I go. And I'll do this this way, and then we'll do the next one, um, uh, how, the, how the pattern is. Actually, right here, I want you to see this. So look on the edge of my block right here. See it kind of bows out a little bit? You can straighten that up with your, uh, with your ruler, and I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna take my ruler here, and I'm just gonna line it up so that it matches, this point matches, and this point matches. And you can see this little bow right here in the middle. And I'm just gonna trim that off so it's nice and straight. And we're gonna go ahead and check all four sides of our block. And all of them have a little bit of a bow. I'm not sure why that happens just on that middle block, but we will just straighten that up so it just looks perfect. And then I'm gonna actually look at the pattern and see what size the finished block should be and see if I'm in the ballpark. So we're getting this right to this edge right here. All right, so our finished block should be 11 inch unfinished and 10 and a half finished. So I don't speak finished and I don't like, I, don't, I mean the finished thing doesn't make any sense to me. When I finish a block, I wanna know that it's, it's supposed to be 11 inches and it looks like I am right on. So I'm pretty excited about that. And um, I'm gonna add then this one and a half inch uh, hydrangea print to the sides. Now, if you want to do this, the pattern will say, Cut these pieces to 11 and to 13. So one and a half by 11, you'll need two of those, and one and a half by 13, you'll need two of those as well. I'm just gonna take my long strip and just sew them down the side like this. 
When you do this, you want to make sure that your block is on the bottom and your strip is on the top. The reason for that, the reason for that is that um, the feed dogs will take in more fabric, and so you want to make sure that the that uh, your strip is on the block on the top of the block because if it was on the bottom, the feed dogs would be scooching it in, and when you open it up, that's where those wavy borders come from. And so you want to you want to not have those wavy borders, and that's why we put the strip on the top. All right, so now I'm just going to sew this one down this side. All right, so now we'll trim this off. And I'm just going to lay my ruler right here and trim this edge. And I'm going to go ahead and press these out. And we're going to we press these to the dark side. So, oh, set my seam. And then iron that back. All right, now we're going to add the strips to the other side as well, to the top and bottom, I guess. And it uh, doesn't matter uh, at this point because I, I haven't even looked at what's top and bottom. I probably should have looked at that. But you just need a blue border all the way around. That's what we need. It's a blue border all the way around. And I see here that my little border, I'm not going to have enough room on this one, so I'm super glad they put in another strip. And we're going to press this open. And you'll notice right here, look, I have a tiny bit of my selvages showing right here, but I can catch that in the quarter inch seam. So I'm not going to worry for one little second about that. I'm going to trim off this selvage right here. And this one is one, this other side should be one and a half by 13. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, cut one of those just that size so you can see that it actually works that way as well. So here's my ruler. And I like to run my ruler um, sideways up my strip like this. I feel like it gives a good measurement. And that's one and a half, oh, by 13 and a half. What's it supposed to be? 13. So let me trim that half inch off. One and a half by 13. It's a good thing I overcut instead of undercut. All right. So now we're going to sew this one onto this side. And it should fit perfectly, and it does. So generally, when you add borders, you're going to add to your sides first and then the top and bottom. But I forgot to check on mine, which was the top and bottom. So when I get done, we'll look at it and just see if it's, if it's right. It should be pretty close. All right. Then we will press this one open. All right, now let me look at this. Oh, I did it right. That's awesome. All right, so now we're going to add another, our uh, background color. We're adding another sashing to it so that when we put them all together, it will fit. And this is where, when you look on here, this is where you just want to make sure uh, that your measurements are right because these measurements are a little different. So it says, from the background strip, cut two, two and a half inch by 13 inch rectangles. So we're going to do that. Two and a half by 13, and those are for our sides. And so we're going to cut, trim off this little uh, selvage right here. And then this, it has to be 13. So once you get your, uh, your strip cut, two and a half by 13, I'm going to press this and make sure that it's laying nice and flat. Because the next sentence says, now trim that rectangle to two and a quarter. So you want to underline those places where you're doing something that's a little bit different because what we're going to do here is make sure these are right lined up exact. And then we're just going to take these and we're just going to trim off this tiny, tiny quarter of an inch right here. It's still not straight enough for me. I'm going to lay it on this line to straighten it up because a quarter of an inch is very tiny. All right, there we go on there. Look down the length of your strip and make sure that it, the whole thing looks like it's about the same. And then we're going to trim that off like this. So now we have a two and a quarter by 13 inch piece and set those aside. 
So the next sashing piece that you cut are going to be your side pieces and I'm going to trim off my little selvage right here. Make sure this is nice and straight. And it says to cut them two and a half by 16 and a half. So we're going to lay this on here. Now my ruler is goes to 15 and so from there I'm going to use my mat and I'm going to go 16 and a half right here. So two and a half by 16 and a half and we're cutting the length of the measurement first and then it says to trim this rectangle to 16 by one and three quarters. So that's another place where you just want to underline and look and make sure that you remember that you have a different cut right there. So we're going to go right here, one and three quarter, and I'm going to match it up right along the edge. Now I'm going to look again just to make sure because I don't want to make a mistake. So we've cut two and a half by 16. Now we're at one and three quarter by 16 and a half. And um, we're going to go ahead and trim that up. All right. So I'm going to come along here and you'll see my ruler isn't quite long enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide this ruler right up there. Make sure the my ruler stays exactly in the same place and just slide it forward. And now I have two, uh, one and three quarter by 16 and a half. All right. So let's start by adding our side triangles, which are the two and a quarter by 13 right over here. And again, we're going to put these on the top, so a quarter of an inch right down the side. And then this little bit will get caught in our seam. We're going to flip this around to the other side and sew that one on. And I just looked to make sure I was, in, in fact, sewing it on the sides, and I am. That was a very happy moment. Now all these little sashing pieces that we're adding um, are we're going to need when we put the whole quilt together. And so it's really helpful to do it now. All right, so then we're going to add our top and bottom and this is our one and three quarter by 16 and a half. And I'm just going to line that up, make sure I'm on the edge this down here. And then we will add the other side. Again, line it up and sew it down. Now let's press this open. Oh, set the seam. See, I was getting in a hurry. <laughs> I'm like a horse to water. Set my seam. And I noticed right over here on this one corner, I have a little bit extra sticking off here, so I'm just going to trim that off. Just that tiny little bit like that. So I really enjoyed making this Ohio Star block. I love a pretty Ohio Star. I hope that you enjoyed it too, and we will see you next month for Block of the Month 9. See you then.